Hey, Raymond. Just going to wait for a couple of people. I'm going to keep my voice low so you may not hear me very well. But uh, this is the main control center here. At Miniature Wonderland in Hamburg. This is one of the workrooms where guys work and test things and try things out. Where'd Joyce go? Ah, okay. Oh, okay. At the Deutschland and uh, Hermann Denkmal. I've actually been to that. Okay, go for it. Push the button, Frank. That's a narrow gauge. Yeah, yeah, meter, meter gauge. <laughs> this is one of the oldest sections at Miniature Wonderland and they've been upgrading parts of it but you can tell it doesn't have a lot of static grass it doesn't have a lot of uh, the more what the more recent stuff has it's a bit older in its time it was state-of-the-art but it's not as crisp as some of the newer areas but this this is a 21 22 year old section here and when you get millions of people each year they are actually drinking you can see them moving their arms. Yep. You, got, you can see these people in here. They're actually raising their arms, drinking. Yeah, we, we can turn it on again in a minute. I'll, I'll turn it on if you, if you uh, keep it. And now you can see they are all drinking. Yeah. Let's see, which way was Scandinavia? Is that well? Do we want to start there? Hey, there's Artie. How are you, Artie? 
So we are just getting ready to start. It's uh, Anthony Dodge Mile Train Outsider. We've got Jean Ricard, the Crazy Dane. And leading the way in front of us, whom you can't see now, we'll catch up, is <laughs> Joyce. But we're going to go to the beginning of this. Gee, Jean Ricard, I thought you Australians thought that the world was uh, backwards uh, and that you would say that it was in the south. All right, so. So let me flip the camera now, but we've got a couple of people here. I saw that Brian Finn was going to go live, but I just thought you guys might like a live trip through. This is actually one of my favorite sections. It's actually a class two eighteen right there. station in Sweden where they lay, make most of the iron ore of the world is, is coming out of Kiruna okay. and going to Narvik in Norway. So if you look way over there, I'll try to zoom in, you can see they've got a little ship getting caught in the Arctic. But this is the second or third oldest section. This was built in uh, uh, 2003, 2004. I don't have the dates on me, so I'm just trying to remember. But it goes all the way back. And you'll hear lots of voices here. And i really trying to... Hey, Andy, how are you? I know people want close-ups of everything, but unfortunately, I can't be here for 10 hours. This is Scandinavia. We just left Corona in Sweden, which Jean Ricard was just explaining is the largest iron ore mine in the world. In fact, most of the world's iron ore in production comes out of there. And we are now shifting to nighttime, so it is getting darker. They do... Hey Richard, how are you? We've just started. This is our first official stop. This is Scandinavia, but we've just gone into nighttime. So nothing's wrong with your cameras. We just. Uh... It's late night for you, Artie. But there, there's just so many things here. I have been here, this is my sixth trip here. And one year I did miss Scandinavia. We just never made it back to Scandinavia because uh, a friend was not feeling well and we had to leave. But um, 
there, you always see something new. There is always something. They, they upgrade things. They fix things. So, I won't be talking much. I don't have access to write things in. I know a lot of people will want... Um, I don't know how well you guys are hearing me right now. Because um, I'm trying to keep my voice down so as not to be rude to the other patrons here. Although, at this time of day, it's not as busy, which is why I thought I could live stream at this time. I would like you to show the sauna from, from northern Sweden there. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> That's the sauna. Real life nighttime look like this. <laughs> but just amazing. I think the church here yeah. looks yeah. more amazing. Oh, that is very cool. I don't know how well it'll show up. I'll try to zoom in. There we go. Now you can see the detail in the stained glass. Well, you have to live in these places and maybe be 187 scale. And just to make Anthony very sad, there's even two 218s right here. Ah. Uh, yep. All those friends. Yeah. But I know people want close-ups of everything. As I said, I just cannot do a close-up of every building, everything. So, again, you want to see close-ups, you got to come here. But the depth, this is what blows everything away, is the amount of detail. And, again, this is one of the oldest sections of Miniature Wonderland. This section is close to 20 years old. The Middle Germany area is the oldest, and this was built, I think, in 2004, I think they had Scandinavia up when we came in 2004. So uh, maybe 2003, because they started, they opened up in 2001, and then they added um, the Hamburg area in 2002, and then they added Scandinavia in 2003, and then they did the Alps. But the Alps were here by the time we came in 2004. But daylight is coming. So again, as beautiful as Mantra Wonderland is, you can definitely see how the technique, the, the quality of construction with modern tech. For example, in some of these areas, you can see where they've come back and done scatter a little bit more. But on these earliest sections, you don't really see static grass because that tech really wasn't around at this time. And, and this part of the layout, as we saw before, that was from Sweden, from yep. Kiruna. This part is symbolizing Norway. Norway. Yep. So this there is are still Swedish trains, like the big yeah. train coming. Right there, that's a Swedish train right there because it's got the little eagle on it. But there's so many trains in action. Sometimes you just got to hold the camera and I'll try to zoom back out. And you'll just see right here, you got steamer going through here, little freight shunting there. You got the passenger train up here, and then way in the back, you'll have trains going through. Yeah, but this is, this is still no way. Yeah, and this is just one room of many. This is just one room of many. And there's hidden stories, there's hidden stories and hidden jokes everywhere. And they... You could see the lock. 
filling and an opening there. Uh -huh. And they don't cheat on the details. There's just as much detail in the back areas. Way back there, there's just as much detail, even though you say, ah, you're far away from the view. But you can do tours and go back in that area. You have to pay extra money to go behind the scenes, they call it. And you'll see that they put just as much detail back there as they have anywhere else. But this is just, again, this is just one room. This is the Norway. We just passed Sweden over there, which they did the winter stuff with. And I didn't even get to show you all the penguin jokes they have. Look at the river flowing through here and the bridges over the rivers, these fjords they're representing. And yes, if your eyes are able to see it, that is a dragon back there, a drachen. That is a dragon back there. It, Oh, yeah. And there are different, different operations, like this is so, a conveyor belt. So we're back to the mine for a second, but Jean Ricard wants to show you all this. <laughs> and uh, it's okay. Dragon's Cave, it says. So yeah, somewhere there's a dragon oh. coming up. Kukma. <laughs> and then there's a Laura, uh, the narrow gates going down. There's the dragon. Where is it going? It's just going okay. Yeah. Whoop. Hi, Robert's train set. How are you? We've got Joyce, Anthony, and Jean Ricard are here. Uh, I think Jean Ricard and Joyce got tired of me broadcasting here and moved forward. <laughs> that boom you're hearing is a fake mine collapse, an explosion. But the Aida is an actual ship that you will see in Hamburg Harbor. Actually, I've stood off the side and seen this here, the Bergvik. And then, and that's the bridge. Is that the bridge they're going to take out? Because Jean, um, his name was Jean-Pierre. No, Jean... Philippe, yeah. No, you're Jean-Philippe. Yeah. But the guy who built this name was Jean something... Um, it's, it's supposed to be the, the Great Belt Bridge, but in reality, the trains that crosses there would go in a tunnel underneath right. the water. Right, right. The bridge itself but, would be... But one of the two big bridges... Oh, no, it's that one. They're, they're going to replace it because it's been replaced in real life. So I, it's either this one here or this one that they're replacing because it's been torn down and it's being replaced in real life. Yeah, well, I noticed we had lost internet. Okay. <laughs> We're back. We're back. If anybody's... Huh. <laughs> Alright, are we back on? I don't know how much we missed. I just noticed that the internet was off. Yeah, we're going into nighttime again. Deutsche term, so. Yeah, the thing is, um, my Streamlabs never disconnected, so apparently the internet went out, but we were still broadcasting. So it might still be on on replay. So if you guys missed anything, <laughs> our vacation will be over in no time. Oh, no. You could spend hours and hours here, guys. Even for the 25 minutes I've been on, um, I've shown you not even one-tenth, heck, not even one-twentieth of this place. 
I mean, this is just one section right here, and look how deep it goes. You can fit this onto a football pitch. Dino, don't worry about it. We're we're lucky if we can get the broadcast. The thing is, it'll be available on replay because uh, Streamlab never stopped um, recording. So even if you guys lost signal, um, it'll still be on the replay. Unfortunately, we're kind of in the dark right now. But they are constantly rebuilding and reworking certain things uh, wear out over time and they come up with new ways to do it. I've seen this uh, particular sort of like monorail um, train set, which you can't really see very well, but maybe you can see the rail going through there. Uh, I've seen it go through uh, four different incarnations since I've been here as they just keep trying to work out the best way to keep it running because it's been problematic all along, but they're determined to get it going. Oh, yeah. Oh. And the balloon just lost its color. The thing is, you really have to see everything in the dark and then see everything in the light because there's totally different worlds. Now this little light show here, and this is just a light garden. But they have all the interactives. Like you can see that flashing, they have them on timer. So once it's pressed, it can't be pressed for a while. And that keeps the things from getting overused, the motors from getting overheated. But this is all still the very first room. This is Scandinavia. Including, that's a Danish castle down there, isn't it? Yeah, that's the East Coast. Yeah, that's. That's actually uh, out of a museum. No. Okay, so now we're entering the section called Hamburg. So we're leaving Scandinavia and we're coming to Hamburg, which is one of the oldest, is the oldest section along with Middle Germany. It started as Hamburg and Middle Germany and then they added so many other things. Yeah, the That's Philharmonie, the Elbe Philharmonie. The the of but even this area, they expanded. If you can see this, um, there's a black area right in there. Well, that used to end right around here, and then they expanded so they could build the Speicherstadt. But there's some trains running. Um, we paid 20 euros, so that'd be about uh, 20, well comes out to about $21 right now. 21 and a half. So that would be about 19 pounds. Joyce and I have tired Jean, Jean Ricard out. But here you even have people on top of a roof. <laughs> Watching a projection TV. There's just something everywhere. There's entrance to the Hamburg Zoo. So this is the Hamburg uh, Animal Park. But whether you're into trains or not, you've got everything here. Just cool designs. There's hidden jokes. A lot of adult jokes. And just in case you thought that wasn't enough, there's even trains that run in the floor. Yes, Robert, you can get around in a day. Depending on how much you want to look at, you can do it in two, three hours. 
I've spent as many as six hours here and felt like I didn't see everything I wanted to see. I've got friends that have spent 10 hours here. But this is uh, a new section they added a few years ago to expand the Hamburg area and show the rebuilding. When The first time I came to Hamburg in 2003, uh, this area here was not built up yet. They were just getting ready to rebuild it. And this only opened about four years ago. The, that's the Elbe Philharmonie. But this was once a very run-down, dilapidated part of Hamburg. And in real life, they've rebuilt it to this. Um, here you can go into the apartment building, the fitness center. There's a hidden room with spies. So every floor there, and uh, I forget which building it is, but you'll have one guy is doing nude pictures on the copy machine, and uh, there's a couple uh, getting it on in the guy's office, political protests. It just goes on and on. Hey, Tim JD, how are you? Just. And the thing is, I have to stop and look with my eyes so I can't necessarily see what I'm doing on the camera. But the famous Hamburger Bridge, which they're replacing, I think this is the one they're replacing. Here's the big Hamburg Hauptbahnhof. <laughs> they're protesting for shorter days, Artie, for shorter days. Since they're 187 size, they want the days to be 187 long. Okay, give me a second. So again, there's just... Actually, most of it, it's probably about a 50-50 split. So if you look in here, it is definitely, this area is three rail. This is Merklin uh, K-Track. And it is three rail. Uh, but it's about half three rail and half two rail. But this area was three rail because when they started in this one of the older areas, Maryland was a big sponsor and contributor. But when I asked them, they now say like most of their trains are Fleischmann and Pico, and then converted as they see fit. So this is more of Hamburg, and there's a fire here. So uh, Jean Ricard is going to start a fire. All right, Artie, you go to bed. Good night, Archie. <laughs> All right, you, did you start the fire? No, I, I actually I think I got the church instead because it's this uh, trumpet of Michaeli song. Oh, gotcha. So. Okay, okay, here we go. Here's the fire. Okay. Yeah, 
That's just one little push button bits they do. I said it. It just keeps going. There's so much to see, and th this is only one half of this room. There's a whole section over there yet to show you, but I want to get through this section and show it to you, especially this corner up here. All right, I'm going to... And see here now, if you look at the track, you can see the track is two rail here. So yes, some of it's three rail, some of it's two rail. But this is also a continuation from over there. This is the old Speicherstadt. Speicher is a warehouse city. Now, hang on. So, because the one thing they haven't done yet is there's now a bridge. But if you look here, they, they were supposed to be rebuilding this, but this is a model of Miniature Wonderland in Miniature Wonderland. It actually was a longer building, but they chopped it off when they moved it over here. Huh. Oh, right there. There they are. Yeah, the torch bears just lit up. But it's just huge. It's massive. And it just goes back and back and back. And this is the football stadium, football arena. And on the pitch are the two Hamburg teams playing each other. The Piraten. FC St. Paul the Parade. And then the Hamburg FC. But look at the crowd they put in here. And then the stadium. Robert, at the very beginning, we showed the whole contrain system, and no, it's their own program. <laughs> it's their own system. It's not any system you can buy. It was all designed by Garrett Brown, along with his crew, one of the owners, and the people that work with them. They have their own control system, and the control system is mammoth. Um, if you want to see kind of what it looks like, you'd have to go back to the video, because we're kind of not in a place to get to it again. But again, the depth and how far, and there's just trains moving everywhere from different eras, and we're going into nighttime again. So you got the soccer. And I'm gonna come around here. Joyce and uh, Jean Ricard are just Natural born button pushers. Yeah. Sounds like management material. <laughs> ah, there goes one of uh, my locomotives. They got the flame Vectron running here right now. There's just so much, and it's just so deep. The famous uh, Fernsehturm of uh, Hamburg. And again, what you're, you'll see here's a wall, which technically ends a room, but this carries on and becomes the section of this... Um, place that's called Mittel Deutschland, Middle Germany. But again, I've only shown you half of this room. This is one of the big train parking areas. Uh, I think it's in the next room. They have what they call the ICE parking area where they just have all their ICEs lined up. But there's no part of this uh, place that isn't alive, active, and draws your attention in. And you just 
I know uh, friends that come here and just say, today I'm just going to spend three hours in Scandinavia. They have season passes. I'm just going to spend so much time in this section of the layout today rather than try to see everything. There's a check. Check EC, just like I run. All right. But they have 30 some people at any given time on the controls of this uh, entire area. And a um, hundred some cameras keeping an eye on everything. Okay, I'm gonna come back this way. But this is the United States section. So over there is uh, the Hamburg and beginning of Middle Germany section. This is the United States. And this has been changed since I first came here in 2003. But they have Las Vegas, a representation of Las Vegas. You got the space shuttle there. You have a tornado coming. You have a, and it's not geographically accurate. So like you have, oops, sorry. Um, you have uh, Florida. You have sort of a Miami Beach representation here. Then you have Cape Canaveral, so sort of a Florida section. And then, so we get to see American locomotives, if we have any American friends in. Uh, then we have Las Vegas in the desert. to launch the space shuttle. Now, when it first started, it actually had sort of a much greater flame effect, but they kept having problems with it, so they uh, had to change it out to just the little LED light system. But again, you got semis running on their car system. Their car system is amazing. So you got this way, and uh, I don't know if you can see back here, I'll try to zoom in, but you have... You have King Kong back here. Hey, Mark from Model Railway Fantasia and Hot Dog Andy Pilot, how are you? Sorry guys, my uh, chat had stopped scrolling, so it had been frozen for a while. Am I flying out when I get to the airport? No, no, I won't fit on any plane, I'm too big. But everything's on timers. There are certain trains that run at certain times, then they go and park and other trains will come out and go cars and then there are certain events scheduled certain number of times a day um, car crashes so it's all controlled by computer systems and the computer systems are so elaborate so you have the old Las Vegas passenger station there Tim uh, they have people of various heights and skinniness and they have special ladders to cross. Actually, you can see one right over here. That is a fold-down section that goes above. So if a train derails sort of in the middle here, that will actually fold down. And then there is a post that they will stick in up at the top there. There's a post that they stick in to bounce it in the middle of the table here so that it doesn't damage any of the scenery. In other cases, they just literally take off their shoes and hop on the table. There are areas where, and they're actually trained and shown. <laughs> Every minute detail is 
it's scripted as to if a train derails here, here's how we get to it. If we need to fix this section, here's how we get to it. And the thing is, even some of these areas actually lift up. The, but the seams are so beautifully hidden, you don't realize it. Every now and then you'll see somebody pop up and it just shocks you that, oh, I didn't even see the seams there. Now, they have moved this around. When I first came here in 2003, this section here, sort of the Grand Canyon-like section, was over here. And Miami was way over there. But then they started building the Alps section and they moved, they actually cut a lot of the American section out. The American section is smaller, although still fun, than it was back in 2003 and 4, the first two times I came here. But if you like your American trains, there you got Chessie system going. The Rock Island lines there. Yeah, the Germans moved Miami. The Germans are like that. Oops. Sorry. Sometimes we get flowing traffic two different ways. And again, I know you guys want to stop, but uh, here they have sort of their um, their cowboy section, the adobes and that. And there's uh, sort of like a border town near the Mexican border, but some of the old Arizona and New Mexico desert areas as well. And we'll come around. And again, this is the oldest section of this. These things go back 16, 17 years. Oh yeah, the uh, folks all parachuting. Uh, it's half and half, Mark. Half of the area is two rail, half is three rail. And the two companies' trains they use the most, they do have a lot of Maryland, especially from their earliest days, they used Maryland in three rail because there were advantages to using three rail. But it was also cheaper to go to two rail once they developed computer systems. Now, you might have looked at those trucks and thought, oh, they stopped. But if you look, whoops, I'm sorry, it's too low. You might not see them. There we go. But there's actually, there's actually a red light. There's actually a red light that they're waiting for. So all the trucks stop and wait for the light to change. And then they'll go again. So now you have Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Actually, Matt Clark is somewhere else, Tim. Yeah. So this is the American Rocky Mountains, which is a section they added on um, a couple years later. And all the signage is in German and English. But you have a Christmas village. You have lumberjacks. You have uh, bizarre little trolls doing magic here. A lumberjack is chopping down a tree here, and the tree will magically stand back up and then fall again uh, when you hit the button. And then here's Big Gulch. But you have people from all around the world here. Hey, Jean. Hey, Jean. Joyce. Joyce. I know, I know. But he needs to hear this. He needs to hear this. You see, this is Big Gulch, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you see how they're having a party? Yeah. That's for the death of Stanley Steamer. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. Actually, it's the celebration before. You're going to watch it. Oh, 
Jesus and Saloon singing. No, that's the Okay. Yep. That's something I'm building as soon as I get back. I hope. Okay. So now we just left the second room. All right. We've only been in two rooms. There's like 13 rooms. And we've already seen Scandinavia, Hamburg, and um, more. But Robert, if Robert's still here. Hey, Ifo. No, we have not gone there yet, Ifo. We did take a picture of it coming in, but we haven't gotten there yet. But here's the control system. So for those of you who just came in, here's the control system. This is the public part of it. There's another room back around, back around here where there's a lot more techs working. But they have people everywhere because there's always something that shorts, something that's not running smooth. And they go. <laughs> but we were here earlier for those of you who just come in. So we're going to move on and continue what's Middle Deutschland. But even in between, they just have little different displays. Like this is a seasonal display. Halloween too. Halloween train. Oh, there we go, the Halloween train. So there are certain things that they only run at certain times of year or at the start of a certain season like the spring train. And these will be on. They are watching them. They're like, this is the World Cup. This is the World Cup train. So they ran this when Germany won the World Championship a few years ago. And again, by the way, there's um, two floors of this plus another building. This is actually the oldest part. Yeah, this okay. is the oldest part. This is the first part. Because we were here two years after they opened. And it's amazing. And that's why. And then we came back. We took a few years where we didn't come here. Because I kind of talked my students into it. And yet the first two groups loved it. But this is called Mittel Deutschland. And it starts over there. And again, guys, there's just so much I can't. Go and focus. The castles, there are castles all through this shot here, way in the back here, castle here. We're getting nighttime again. We've got a um, Rheingold, or is it a uh, Orient Express run? But I think it's a Rheingold. It's dark, I can't see. But this is this is a representation of the middle of Germany. There's there are some things that are actual and some things that are just sort of meant to bring out the ideas. And this is the oldest section. And again, so when you get in here, they've repaired some areas with some levels of static grass and so forth, but originally they just used scatter grass in these areas. Yeah, Vesuvius is erupting. If you're hearing banging in the background, Mount Vesuvius is erupting. We'll get you to that. Because that's one of the coolest things. It's hard to believe. Uh, we had visited before, just as they were building Vesuvius and then came back a few years later after it had been installed. Um, it's 15 minutes is, uh, no, no, it's 15 minutes and then five minutes dark, 15 minutes and then five minutes dark. Yeah, um, Robert, I don't think uh, the Germans give a lick about uh, Manchester City winning the uh, FA Cup.
Well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Because no, the only German squad that matters to anything is uh, FC Bayern, and they're not my team. My team's Werder Bremen, which is now in League Two. I don't know if they got promoted back up to League One. They won the championship in 2004, the second year of our exchange program, and then they haven't done anything since. Here's an amazing little uh, castle. All right, take care, Andy. They actually have a fire event at this building too that you can't control, they do it. They do it like once or twice a day. And all the fire trucks have to come up the road and issues happen. Here, I'll let you try to see the three level bridge they built back there. And yes, trains go across all three levels. We have seen this train in three sections so far. It is just, it's running a route across the entire layout. And this is three rail if Mark uh, Model Railway Fantasia is here. So we're back. These older areas are three rail. Joyce and I finally paid the money last year, or well, four years ago now, God, last year, four years ago, and we went and did the background tour. And like I was saying earlier in the stream, they don't skim. Just because something's in the background where the average person doesn't see it doesn't mean there's not something there, including a Velocir Velociraptor attack back here. There are jokes they put in that only the workers know about. Got an OBB freight train coming through. That's Österreichisches Bundesbahn, Austrian Federal Rail. And here comes an ICE. An ICE 4, in fact. And I don't know if that's the Pico AC version or the American one. And then just back here, the depths and the detail. And again, this is the oldest section, so it they are in the process of beginning to uh, just come through and clean it up a bit. And, uh, you know, it's gotten old. And after years, dust gets on it, and they do vacuum these places, like, nightly. Um, and workers have to, um, they have actual air duct areas up in the ceiling um, that they can plug vacuums in and vacuum so they're not dragging the hose across the trees and that. And then they have footpaths that the workers are trained to walk on so that they can reach areas. But still, you know, this stuff was done with the technology of 20 years ago and model train technology just in the last 10 years has exploded so much. In fact, that is a cleaning car going through right now, a track cleaning car. But they are constantly in a state of maintenance with this. Constantly. Um, I actually got to help a guy once because he was kind of stuck in a situation and I just came in and lended a quick hand, you know, because he got, they were having a car that kept coming apart and separating uh, on a passenger train. Here comes a long freighter.
Oh, you bought the IC for town? Cool. How you doing, Jean? Yeah, I'm doing fine. I was just living here, uh, saying that you know we had the great showstopper. Yeah. And it's amazing because even that made miniature wonderland doing wonderful things. Because when you see how many people that are here, they use the time to renew the entire floors. Floor yep. Of, of uh, when they had to close, yeah, they yeah. rebuilt. They rebuilt so much. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, so in that way, they, they really used uh, it to the best of their ability. Yeah. yeah. All these guys are, in my opinion, they are the model of how you run a company. Yeah. The the lowest worker here is paid better than an average teacher in the United States. Yeah, but it doesn't say anything about the payment of the worker here. Yeah. It says something about the wages of the teachers in the United States. But but again, it's, these guys could be billionaires, but they. They, instead of personal profit, it goes back into this, into their workers, health care, everything. The night crews here make good money. The, the vacuum people make good money here. It's a career. It's not a job they do for a couple of years before they move on to a real job. It is, it is their job until they find something that would pay them even better. That's why some of these people have been here for 20, 22 years. Yeah. Before they also get older, you know, so mm -hmm. at that time you will have, and, and we have seen it when they have shown films, you know, from, that they sometimes have to say goodbye to people going on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there, yeah. Um, the guy that built all these big bridges oh, retired. Yeah. And, you know, all you can do is, and he made enough money here, he made enough money here, he retired to his boat. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's unbelievable. So now we're getting into the Alpine region. If you haven't figured out from all the balloons and the other stuff, the owners, uh, the two twin brothers, the, the public owners, there's two private owners, a silent partner and their father. Um, they're very, very progressive people. Oh, a night train. I just missed it. A Swiss night train, I think. No, Austrian night train. Not the not the night jet, but a night train. Nachtzug. Yeah. The cleaning car is stopped here. I don't know if they've done that while they're waiting for trains to finish a circuit before it can go on. Um, but you can see there's a ski resort back here. I'm sorry, I'll take my finger off. There's a ski resort back there. And people doing slalom skiing or whichever form of downhill skiing they're doing. Um, you can animate the ski lifts there. They don't. They used to run permanently, but they've since made it animated just to save wear and tear on it. And those are made by the company Jägendurfer Collection, I believe, who are famous more for their uh, ski lifts, Zesselbahn, and such than they are for um, other model trains, which are very exclusive, very touchy. Some can be really good quality, some can be really weak. But yeah, this was the first, this area here was one of the first expansions because they started with central Germany and then quickly added Hamburg and uh, then Scandinavia and then the Alps. They did rapid expansion 
roll the camera so you can crew in over the area. I don't know if they allow that, but uh, <laughs> it, could be fun. It, it could be interesting. Well, I mean, I've seen people with selfie sticks and doing all that and boom mics and that. Professional photographers all here. I'm, I'm going on to Canoofingen. Okay. Now we're entering an area that was built in the, um, about 10 years ago. And again, I don't remember the exact dates. And I wasn't going to cheat and go to my coach. But this is the famous Canoofingen Airport. You still have the Alps. And just to show you the detail. Okay. That is down on the third floor. We're up on the fourth floor. That mountain here is from the base floor to the top over 20 feet tall. That is uh, over six, I think seven meters tall. And it just goes on and basically the Matterhorn. Again, this stuff was first created a few years ago. You can see it's getting dark again. If you see a train, how long to see it again? It depends on which route it's running. There are some trains you literally might see once in a four hour visit. There are other trains Sorry, somebody's sending me attachments here. Um, so there are so many different circuits here. It just depends on which section you're on. There are some you might see it every 15 minutes. There are some where you might see it once in a two-hour period because they're all automated. So they will run a certain course maybe once or twice, and then they will go park, and another train will come and take over. Yep, we've gone into nighttime again. But uh, obviously most of you probably are now familiar with the famous Knuffingen Airport, which is actually based on Hamburg's airport. But because it's not 100% accurate to Hamburg Airport, they called it Knuffingen. Uh, let me see if I can get in here somewhere and catch because they both take off and land. Entschuldigung. Actually, Mark, it's rather, this is in the evening, and we probably have half to a third of the crowd we would have middle of the day. Whoops, hang on, here comes a plane landing. We're taking off, I believe. Yeah, he landed. And then they go around. Joyce and I got to go in 2019. We got to go back inside. There's a room back there you can go into and see how they operate it back there. But if you didn't know, they have a departure board. And they have a few jokes. For example, Mothra from Japanese monster movies uh, flies in now and then, the Millennium Falcon. Okay, here's a takeoff. My friend Heinz, when we would come here together, he would spend most of the time just watching the planes. He so loved, he so loved the airport. He didn't care to watch the rest go around the rest of the layout because he'd seen it a couple of times and that was enough. 
And like I said, we're still in the old sections where the craftsmanship is good, but has been improved upon. So who are we speaking now? Uh, Mark from Model Railway Fantasia is here. Yeah. Uh, Tom, Eric one's out. Robert's Train set is here. Model Ra Railway Shadino. Hot Rod Andy was here. Hot Dog Pilot Randy yeah, was yeah, here, but yeah. he left for dinner. Okay. Uh, we were up to 19 at one point. We're down to nine. Better but just watch it. It's a great stream. Uh, yeah, we probably lost about 10 minutes at one point where we were off internet, but it, Streamlabs kept going, so on replay it should still be there. Yeah. I, this stuff is so impressive here, and yet this is their oldest tech, which they try to upgrade as they can. Although the airline, I, God, I think it's been 10, 12 years at least since they opened the airline now. Yeah, and, and they have expanded it Yes. Because I remember when they added this. Yeah, okay. I only think I ever saw it, you know, with the landing and stuff. Mm -hmm. No, the first time I saw it, it had this here, that there, and a bit there, and this was open. They didn't have anything here, and then they added this, which I assume they had planned all along and just yeah. did it in sections. Have you uh, shown the yep. out section there? Where yeah, show how deep it is. That's like seven meters tall on the one. Yeah. Yeah. And again, even on the sides, they just do little scenes here, like... There's so many little things. I can't show it all to you. That's why you, once in your life, if you're into models, if you're into model trains, you have to come here because they have all these little cavern displays. These are alpine cavern displays. They have hidden, here you can kind of see a behind the scenes as the trains go through. But I don't want to call it a shot in Bonhoeff, but you almost could say it's that. But it's just an underground passage through the, but they do park them at times while they await their turn to go. And now it's, yep. and there's Neuschwanstein. Yeah. And there's the Marienbrücke, which Joyce and I stood on in 2017 to get our view of Neuschwanstein. We did not go to the castle itself. We debated it and then decided we didn't want to wait in line for three hours. Yeah, Robert, you definitely have to buy a ticket in advance. And I would seriously say at least six months ahead. You can walk up and buy tickets. They always have a reserve number for people to walk up. But on their busiest days, you might wait three hours in line to get a public access ticket. So it's always advisable to buy in advance. And here's just a little behind the scenes access to some of their circuit boards so you can. There's a tunnel. Boring. Yeah, boring machine here. Oh, yeah. yeah, down here they got the tunnel boring machine. Oh, it's over there. There it is. Oh, yeah, I'll get it right. There we go. But it's. You can't activate it right now. No. And then the last part of our little visit to the Alps. Although we will go down that way, I think. But this is based on an actual mine in Switzerland, both lumberyard and mining. A cement factory, where they mine the rock to come in and make the, make the cement and concrete. They have a little um, toboggan racing thing up here. There it goes. This is Kinderspielplatz. Ja, das ist so, wie wir das so rum. 
There's a little story here. This is a true story about a village that was destroyed when they built a dam and the village flooded and it's a dead village and when they uh, decided to change the dam, I forget exactly the full story, but um, there's now this old decayed village that still sits there including the church and these guys built a little joke scene with it with ghosts having a party there and then up on top of the dam you have a polar bear checking the sites. Okay, and now... Actually, I want to us to send a special greeting to Lord Al, you know. Okay. And if you focus on this area with the tummy boring machine, you know, <laughs> I'll start the show. Well, Lord Al, Abby. <laughs> There's something he's locked in, it seems like, because his... Uh, Mark, we showed uh, the Scandinavian port area. Well, like I said, I'm actually walking through a lot faster than I normally would. Just so I can show as much of this to you all as I can. And yet still stream, but I also want to look at things. But it's I, just... I, I can see George. She's standing way back there. Yeah. In the yeah. She stands out in the crowd to me anyhow, but that's a different... Oh yeah, she's going to get her picture of a plane. A narrow gauge, um, and uh, probably you have this little rescue scene. Somebody got there goes that cleaning track cleaning car again. But this is a rescue scene. They've got somebody in the uh, I don't know what you call that at that stage. Right? Who's sending me messages? It might be Joyce asking where we are. No, it's some uh, scam email. Somebody asking, hey, how are you? I saw your name on PPL. I'm not on PPL, so I don't know what the hell they're smoking. But just, there's... Jackie keeps sending me messages. Jackie, I am live streaming. Oh yeah, yeah, Carl, we showed that um, in the Scandinavia section because that's where we started and then moved into the Germany um, section, the oldest sections. Okay, she caught sight of us and is coming. But for those of you who don't know, there's Oh, you missed a train? Yeah, because there's one that runs under the steps here. They have trains running in the floor. They have trains running across the ceiling. Oh my goodness, stop sending me messages. The Swiss Italian border. And again, now here's an idea. Again, just how tall and deep that mountain is. See, so we're on another floor here. Okay. And this is a train elevator to lift up the trains from one level to another instead of a uh, 
Right. Uh, what you call it, glide swindle. Uh, uh, yeah, the helix. Helix, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, when they want to change levels on the train, they'll park them in here. And you can right see there's a little the chain drive over here, and it raises them up. And then they go on to yeah, the next. Exactly. In fact, here it goes. So these guys are getting ready to go up into the scenes. So you can see right up here, you can see where it's going to go in now. It was down here, but now they're going to park it up there, if it's this one, because they will rotate him. And there it goes. Now he's going to go, I think. Any minute now. Any minute now. There he goes. And now he's going into an upper level. Okay. Wasn't Vesuvius upstairs? Or is it down here? Oh, gotcha. Okay, right. The thunderstorm in the American section. Oh, yeah. Here's the James Bond, like the international world domination. They have all these little characters and scenes. This is all their little sci-fi jokes. Dr. Frankenstein and zombies and space aliens and... Area 51 jokes. Here they're filming the fake moon landing. There's just, there's just jokes everywhere. Okay, so now we've left the Swiss Alps and Austrian Alps, and now we come into one of the newer sections, Italy. And we'll just start you off with a great one here. It's tough when they're going to align it with uh, the lights. They like to do it in the dark. So it is getting darker here. Is it going to go? Come on. see all the detail that doesn't pick up on a camera while you're watching it on a camera but you get to stand here live and see it but I know I'm lucky that I can make these trips to Germany and I get to stay here but if you ever have a chance and you're into model trains and just think this kind of tech stuff is cool tech guys model train guys model building guys Some of you guys out there could actually get jobs here because you're good and these guys are always looking for good if, when they have to retire somebody. But they have Mount Vesuvius and then they have Pompeii and Hercule 
Herculaneum here. Um, and what's fun with it is that they have both modern history, you know, like if you look right here, it's modern tourists, but back here you have Roman gladiators and So they're not worried about, wait, how can you have Roman centurions and gladiators and that while modern tourists are walking around? They just create both scenes for you. So again, more of the Swiss Alps coming in on this side. Well, you know, I don't want to be negative comparing Yeah, I don't want to be negative comparing. Northlands is awesome, and considering that was built by a guy and his friends, and it's massive, it's it's amazing. But this is a different type of layout building. It is a um, it is professionals who you know use the highest level of skill and tools to do this. And I've been to both. And yeah, I mean, stylistically and technique-wise, Northlands is cool, but it's not even close in league to this. But Northlands is still amazing because that's one guy and some friends doing it, not hired professionals with a much bigger budget. So we're, we're slowly working our way towards the Amalfi Coast section. All right, Richard, take care. I'll be on probably for another... <laughs> oh, wow, if I tried to show you everything, I'd be on for another two, three hours. But I'm... You know, Jean Ricard is uh, going to get tired here a bit. Um, Joyce and I are going to get tired. And to be honest, I'm moving slower than I planned just because... I um, want to make sure I look at this besides just film it. But I've been here so many times and I haven't even gotten to the section I'm here to see because there's three new sections. And so I'm trying to... So here we go into the Amalfi Coast area. And again, if you look at the water technique here versus some of the water technique in earlier sections, you can see the skill, the techniques, the instruments, the tools all have upgraded. So this is a newer section built between eight years ago and three years ago, four years ago. Um, you can see, compared this to the older section, you know, definitely a higher use of static grass. Um, I, I even sadly I skipped the vineyards way up on the mountainside up there just because I'm trying to get through so much it, it's a again you could easily spend you could do it in two three hours if you just walk through and just kind of look at everything a little bit but if you really want to visit here you got to plan on four or five hours if you really want to see everything here and get a fair view of it four to five hours would be a minimum The longest I have spent here is uh, about six hours. I did that with Joyce in 2019. We came here and stayed the day here. We didn't have friends with us. We didn't. It was just Joyce and Joyce and I here, and so we just. Um, here's a part of the Italy. They have the uh, spaghetti western scene here. You know, spaghetti western scene being filmed here you know the old uh, Sergio uh, Arione uh, movies and that 
and of course a million joke scenes. For example, you got a triceratops with a cowboy on it. Um, this just sets everything off here. Again, here's the push button. And now everything will start up. Oops. The wall falls there. There's a fight on the rooftop. There's a Bronco busting in the middle. There will be a shootout. Um, there is a mule reading a newspaper and a Lord Al Lavi here. Mark, the, um, the stadium is on another floor and way back, so unfortunately we can't work our way back there. All right, Robert, you take care. And another dragon flying around a castle. This is really big though. Yeah. It's a film set. <laughs> so it's, and there's Matt Clark's office. You can see there. Actually, Matt Clark is going down there. Well, technically, that'd be the sheriff's office. So that's. Oh yeah, yeah. That would be Buck's office. Okay. And even here, Lord Al is present with no less than four cut. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't open this time. Okay. Because there's the mule reading a newspaper in there. Yeah, the wall falls and then the fight starts up here. The two cowboys fighting. The Bronco busting. Uh, the Lucky Luke shootout. Okay. Um, some of them just aren't working, you know, unfortunately. Because, yeah, you can see right here, this is where the shootout was. And they had yeah. the two poles, so obviously they're fixing it. And the picks are moving. Uh, the grave burials. Uh not happening because he had the guy that was carrying all the graves this is based on that discovered italian uh they discovered a park okay that had been hidden for like two three hundred years that some rich italian guy had built and died or whatever and this part of his estate just was overthrown all right we need to get to the news sections yep yep but i want to get to the news sections And here's the DJ Bobo. Is, am I saying that name right? Yeah, DJ Bobo, who is a big um, musical star, although he's not as big as he was, but a big DJ Bobo concert. And they do change this. Every time he comes out with a new album and uh, stage show, they change this to match his latest stage show. Then they have a little video down there of his actual concert. There's just so much, guys, so you're going to have to forgive me if I uh, don't show everything or you see something and go, wait, I'll go back, I want to see that. Oh, there you go, the chocolate. Do they still have the little button where you get the chocolate? Mm -hmm. This is the Lint Chocolate Factory from uh, Switzerland. And still, I'm bouncing back and forth. I tried to do one territory at a time, but yeah, Switzerland really rolls. They really went out with Switzerland and then because I don't think they were planning on really expanding much further after Switzerland. They had plans, but they didn't know how they are going to do it. So they really wanted to make Switzerland sort of the showcase. And now you almost walk past Switzerland because you're checking out Italy. Wait, did Jean go into the next room? Right? Yep. Okay. Um, here's Venice. Now, in 2017, they had opened Italy, but they had not opened Venice yet. So it was in 2019 that we saw Venice for the first time. And in 2019, when we were watching Venice, they were just working on uh, the French section, the Provence and Monaco. So they were finishing Venice, but they hadn't opened it yet. They had delayed it. It was supposed to be open when we got there in 2017, but they had opened Italy 
and Rome, but they had not opened Venice. So it was 2019 when Joyce and I got to see Venice for the first time. Let's see the clock tower. They have active scene where people chase pigeons away. It's just so much. So, but yeah, when we saw this in 2019, fully installed in, again, we were watching all the videos of them building it, and we had seen all these sections, but coming here and seeing it together, the amount of detail in these buildings. And this is all, okay, this is not models you go out and buy. They had to custom make these models. Now, they did a lot of it with 3D graphic design and their own 3D printing. There is a room, which you can see on the behind the screen tours, um, behind the scene tours, where you can go see their massive uh, CNC boards, their 3D printing section. It, it, it's they've just got so much. It's amazing. Oh yeah, they rock them up and down. Yeah. Okay, that turned that one on. Yeah, the Zagon, yeah. They have the people chasing each other around there, knocking people over and doing that, and then you have a bridge collapses. But the lights are going up. Hmm. Oh, and should I go? Yep, okay. Thank you, sir. And should I go? But yeah, Italy was really their first build with all the new tech, where they had all the new um, static grass designs and static grass devices, machines. This is the Termini Roma, the Roman main station, and it's their, I don't know, uh, I believe they said that in terms of length and depth, not in terms of number of uh, tracks and platforms, but in terms of length and depth, it was their biggest station. just eye candy everywhere you know the famous uh, uh, what are they I think they're, they're called the Spanish Steps uh, the Vittorio Emanuel different things and there's always joke scenes there's always joke scenes somewhere somehow many adult joke scenes as well this is one you really want to uh, here I'll see if I can get this one going again a little porcelain shop Hey Ian, how are you? So this is Rome. You got this amazing thoroughfare through here. The station. Now I've been here when this station has just had trains going in and out. And it's just the time of day and what's running and where, where they are on their routes. Because this is a massive build. This is easily uh, 30 feet long here. You know, nine, nine meters more. But uh, they took out the Victor Emmanuel little display here at the Victor Emmanuel. 
Are you all right? Yeah. Okay. All right, so now you want to talk about detail. Here's a totally hand scratch, and it's built at one, I think they said one, one fifteenth scale, but it's St. Paul's Cathedral at the Vatican. So you do have the Pope in there. You do have the Pope in there. But this was all hand sculpted. Even before 3D printing, they had to sculpt the prototypes to put them into design. They had to sculpt them. And then 3D photograph them and then print them. I must think of a bit long to hold it. And actually workers, there's an access skirt down here and workers can actually come up and get their heads up in here to repair anything that needs done in here. Sometimes I think it can even have the opposite effect. You you know, you're a model railway builder, then you see what these guys do and you go, I can never compete with that and <laughs> walk away. Uh, but no, it's just so amazing because, I mean, half the people here are not into model trains. Probably 70% of the people here are not into model trains. They are here because this is so amazing. And they just come to see it. Okay, there's... So we'll come to the Coliseum now. But again, this was the really the first new section in five years. They had kind of hit a point and they were like, where do we go next? And they had some ideas and that's when they began negotiations to buy the building next door. And um, so we got the famous Roman Colosseum. And again, this was hand built. Even the brickwork, this was not 3D printed. This was hand built. And if you don't believe me, you can go watch the Miniature Wonderland videos where they show how it was constructed and the two girls and one guy that built it. Okay, so now that I'm away from the train station, you can see trains are starting to come in. But this is where they really kind of went next generation in design. They had revamped the entire they had re revamped the entire, entire um, electrical system, <laughs> control system, everything. They completely revamped it and uh, decided they could now start doing more things. But also, static grass was becoming more easily accessible. So uh, I don't know how well you can see that castle back there. But that's one of the first ones where they really, really, really started using static grass um, instead of scatter and the old-fashioned methods of creating tall standing grass. Here's the Treve Bionin or the Trevi Fountain. secondary station in here. And these are the type of cars I'm looking for right now. These are uh, Austrian OBB, Österreichisches Bundesbahn. These are Austrian EC cars, Eurofirma cars. Um, and and I want a rake of those. Joyce and I will actually be riding on one soon. Yeah, the three aqueduct gate. And I have been lucky, especially in my last two visits, I have met so many of the more famous workers here and gotten to talk to them, including one of the owners, Garrett Brown. 
And for those of you, the even graffiti makes this. Ja, richtig, stimmt. Ja, ja genau. And we're heading into the French section, the Provence. So coming out of the Italian Alps into the um, still Italy, but heading towards the French Alps and the Provence section. But you can see it's still Italy because they have all the linens out here hung. And they just kept building all the way through. They just, wherever they could take out a support wall, replace it with a steel beam or two. And then here you go, where they're working on Monaco. This is Monaco, as we say in German, or Monaco. Uh, I'll come around and give you a better butt. This is not completely open yet. Some of the sections of France are open, but this section is not fully open yet because they're still building it. So they actually built a temporary containment unit around it while they're working on it, but you can see it. And the big thing they're trying to do here, of course, if you follow it, <laughs> is they are still trying to design, and now they have to work on it in the board. They're still trying to figure out the best way to run the Monaco Grand Prix. And they keep finding something that works, and they, they're, they're, they get so much closer. But then... But then their systems run into new snags. So I'm coming around so you can see it here. You can see here they're doing temporary tests. Liebe Gäste des Vineto Monalandes, darf ich Sie ganz kurz um Ihre Aufmerksamkeit bitten. Seit 2007 helfen wir hilfsbedürftigen Kindern mit unseren wunderschönen Spendenpins. Die Wunderlandpins oder Magnete kosten 2,90 Euro, die komplett an die Provinz oder Einrichtungen gehen, die sich um Kinder kümmern. Insgesamt konnten wir schon über 700.000 Euro spenden. Wir würden uns riesig freuen, wenn Sie sich auch an dieser Aktion beteiligen würden. So unfortunately, I mean, I can zoom in and you can see the detail, but they have been working on this section for so long. And yes, it's a yacht. And there are many yachts. Um, you, sadly, Ian, you already missed or I went through the one uh, sailing park, although there's more to come. But yes, they show yachts. Now, this is a um, concert. And you could actually buy a famous German singer uh, came here, and they were doing it as a fundraiser. And you can and you can still do it. You can buy a figure and put it in because they still have seating available. But they did raise the money they wanted to raise. But yes, you can still go over. I think it's ten euros, whatever it was. Oh, twenty-five euros. Okay. No, it can be ten euros. 25 euros you get four seats but you and your friends can do it you donate the money and they will put figures in and they'll list your name in the attendance um, I forget the Hel Helena Fisher that's her name so a Helena Fisher concert No, there's no David Hasselhoff on the layout. But here's the one part of France, the Provence, that is, you can get up to it and see it. And they're still working on it in some ways. But this is the section they were just working on and hoping to get open when COVID hit. And COVID did slow it down. But Joyce and I were here in 2019, and they had some of this set up, but they did not have it complete. Now they have it complete enough that trains are running and they have the buildings all molded up and and that. So this part's done. They just need Monaco to work better. <laughs> and again, you can see Monaco here. And you can see where, um, it's on the other side, but you can see where they're still trying to fit in 
Um, they've got a little shot in Bonhoeff area down there, underground uh, station there with people and everything. But um, yeah, let's see if I could get up there. But they're trying to put in this very complex race because, I mean, anybody could do like a father car, but they want the cars to actually have random abilities where the cars will all drive independently like actual drivers driving them where a different car might win every race instead of it being programmed that way the cars can pass spin out crash and the computer will control it all and it's such a complex system that they've gone through four different programming companies who just give up and then they've been doing it on their own and they get it real close that you can i don't know how well you can see it but there is some white micro board in there that's actual computer board, and that will be, but like every square centimeter has a different processing section attached to it, and the computers have to feed this. So they actually, they have it working, but there are still glitches where cars will suddenly stop where they shouldn't be stopping, um, or cars will start to pass and one will just suddenly stop or they won't pass where they should pass, or they're not slowing down where they should. There are just little errors that they, millions of errors basically that they have to go through and then fix the code for that one error. And then once they fix that one, the next one lights up and they have to fix that error code. But eventually, maybe within the next year, they might actually have it working because they obviously have the road track ready to go. They've got the board in, but there are videos that show you how to do it. Okay, I think we need to move on to the new section. Uh, we need to go across the bridge. The question is where? But Joyce and Jean Ricard are being very patient while I live stream. Here you can actually see the underfloor going and what's yeah. behind it. Right. So yeah, here's a little, um, it's an end-to-end -end bit, but you'll see these trains, okay, and this is the little shot in Bonhoeff, and they're going to build more to it, and then it will literally go under the floor here, and then... And you'll see it come through here. Here's another little hidden train station, ICE. Ivo, you're such an impatient man. Ifo. But like this is the tunnel to go. But there you go. But yeah, those trains will show you. And then all of a sudden, they will... Oh, by the way, here we go. So we're on that bridge. Maybe some of you saw the video where they put this in place, but yeah, in beautiful Hamburg. But here they go. There goes a TGV, ISB train. Now, I'm filming this from above. You're getting a helicopter view, but... And they had a contest where people got to design different sections and create different climate adventures. But sadly, we just had the nice uh, TGV going. This is actually a Dutch scene. Yep. With the tulip fields and the Dutch. And the windmill. windmill. Yeah. yeah. And then you have the tropical lagoon island. Ah, here comes the train through. And then it goes under, so you have a little island atoll bit with another boat. <laughs> Bunch of stacked uh, containers. That's Which the created part divide. Of the mass container ship. Yep. And then we have the Arctic. So you have this little Arctic section with a whale jumping out. Humpback whale, I think. Yeah. A little sort of jungle like scene. Going Desert Egypt. Egypt. And I think that's supposed to represent the old dye making things, and then you got all the tires as well. <laughs> no, hopefully, I'm not. I'm gonna just say here. So now, 
here we go. I have never been in this section before, people, so I can't even tell you what to expect. I've seen it being built, but this is all new. This is all new. And this is their newest. And what's unique about this is this was not built by the people of Miniature Wonderland. A few people from Miniature Wonderland did help, but this was primarily built by a South American company who would send designs based on what the Germans took pictures of, but they thought if they were going to do South America, South Americans should do it to get the true nuances. But <laughs> there's just... There is so much. This they this is their newest and their most involved creation yet. I think it took them ten years from concept to getting it open. All the while they're building and renewing other sections. This is just it's lights. I mean, and if you want to he hear something, there's very few trains in this. Even though this is a model train place, this part of South America, like this whole area here, there are no trains. At the Copa, Copa Cabana, hot as but south of Havana. And, and Copa Banana next door to the Copa Cabana. So you got the Copa Banana next to the Copa Cabana. So like this entire section, there's there's no trains. They do have some rail cars, some trams that do run through here. I'm kind of waiting to see if one comes through. But again, I have to actually stop and see this. I can't just make sure the camera, I gotta make sure I take this in. Oh, yep, there it goes. Little, well, that's not real cars. That's like uh, narrow gauge, whatever they're doing. But these buildings are amazing. Yeah, it looks like one of them's derailed, doesn't it? It's hard to tell. But look at this building here and this one here, how elaborate that is. That wasn't Jean singing, that was me. Just to show some of the, the this is water jet skiing, you know, in a, in a minute I'll get a green light. Oh, there you go. And we will get that guy over there on the water jet. Just so happy that he didn't get too close to the helicopter. Indeed. Yeah. Well, that might be his buddy up here. Parasailing. Yeah. And this is... Oh, you got a genie on a flying carpet right here. John, did you see the genie on the flying carpet? No. Okay, yeah, yeah. See, I tend to know where most of the joke scenes are, but this is all new to me, so I have to... Yeah, obviously, this was the one they had to repair, so they've still got to... And so now we finally actually get to the running trains. coming on two hours broadcast and down to nine people. I really thought this might bring in more, but what can I say? My channel's been dying lately. I've lost like 10 subscribers in the last four days and uh, my live feeds uh, aren't getting the viewers anymore. I'm going to have to actually do something noteworthy without resorting to cheap tricks. Although you might accuse me of this is a cheap stunt, but guys, I'm here and I love my friends and I just wanted to share this with you and rather than you having me tell you about it, show it to you while I'm going through it. No, I thought that looked a real best time. Look at this gorgeous little old, uh, trolley rail car. Tram, probably a better word. But yeah, this is my first time here seeing this part. I've been to Minter Wonderland. This is number six. This is number six. 
Oh, the rainforest. Yeah, they're building a rainforest over there. There's Jean Ricard across there. Even he's going to get some pictures. Joyce is taking all kinds of pictures. And for example, the realism they put into, uh, I'm trying to find a good example of it. Well, you got the nude sunbather there. Uh, but like the power lines here. If you were to see Rio de, Rio de Janeiro, any of the big cities down in South America, how the electrical systems are just, I mean, you'd get fired in America for this kind of wiring, but it's just they're doing what they can as they can. I'm going to have to remember that word. <laughs> okay, so when you press the button, there's a skateboard park over here. If Steve the Plumber 33 is watching, there's a little skateboarder that goes into action there. This is just a little market. Yes, yes, that was a cleaning car there. Yep. Abstalba. Yeah, Jean and I actually will be posting another video. We'll have to make it maybe tomorrow. But we did go shopping at a couple of uh, rail shops today and bought some things. Actually, Jean bought me some things. He did not need to, but he did buy me some things. I happened to mention, ooh, I kind of like that. And before I knew it, he had it on the counter and was buying it. I was like, dude, I can buy my own stuff. But that's what friends are for. Like I said, I mean, a place that is truly a train, model train fame. And yes, there are model trains running here, but... Your biggest eye catchers aren't even the trains anymore. It is the modeling. It is the famous buildings. And we're getting into Carnival. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to get Carnival going. Originally, this was designed to move a bit, but they don't have it moving. They were going to make it like a rot rotisserie belt. And again, the detailing. And, you know, a crew of 20 different um, workers from Miniature Wonderland made three different visits to three different sections um, a week, two weeks at a time, and their whole job was to take pictures up close, far away, widescreen, everything, so that they could recreate these elements in this whole South American bit here. Giant parrot. So yeah, the action starts at the front and then it just continues on and grows and grows and grows across. But like I said, this is my first time here, so 
I'm just kind of overwhelmed myself. Um, my first time seeing the South American layout. Because this is just amazing. So, sadly, I, I do want to see so much more of this. But I'm going to move over here. And this is getting into... Yeah. So the two areas I'm going to show you now are the two brand newest areas. Just open, what, within the last two months? No, it was open last month. Last month? This, yeah. In the middle of the end of May. May. Right. Section. So, well, that's still within the last two months. Yeah. We argue over semantics. Jean Ricard likes to argue over semantics. Um, just ask him about the word great. Jean Ricard, would you describe this as great? This is uh, a very special train. It's the narrow gauge lines of Patagonia. This is South South America. <laughs> this the, is the most southerly, presumably, railway in the world. And they still run with steam locomotives. Yep. It's a heritage railway. They got a diesel. Well, that's the cleaner that's going across the whole layout. Hey, Dragon Junction's there. Hi, Alan. I'm glad you're wa liking it. Oh, so this is Patagonia. So yeah, this just opened. Yeah, it was the middle of May. Here it's the end of May. So um, you're seeing it before a lot of other people have. Um, although I'm sure a few thousand people have already seen it in the last uh, two weeks. But I really think that you should show all the sheep being loaded to the train there. Well, Artie went to bed. Yeah, but, but, but still, he might see it later. So all our Scottish and Australian friends, this is a lot of sheep, so don't get too excited. And those trains are actually hand-built for the... from the workers of miniature on the land. Yep. You cannot buy them. Oh, it's getting dark. But my thing is normally, if I weren't streaming, I'd be walking around looking for all the joke scenes. Because that's one of my favorite things to do, all the funny scenes. But since I'm streaming with you guys, I'm trying to show you the serious stuff and some of the joke scenes if I can get them in. The Gaucho Festival. Does it do anything in the dark? Oh, there we go. Oh, yep, it lights up. You can't quite see the dancers. Okay. Now again, every corner, nothing's wasted. And there's no way I can show you everything. You need to come here. All right, in just under two hours, I have shown you almost everything that is part of the, the normal main section. There's only one more section I gotta show, which is once you do Patagonia, once you do Patagonia, and the glaciers, You guys, you, I can't wait to show you this. I cannot wait to show you what I'm about to show you. But now we're in the South, I'm sorry, we're leaving South America and we are going into, we're going into uh, Antarctica. And you guys have got to see this. This is new level modeling on your layout. This has been a bit of a hidden surprise. They've talked about it, but they've talked about keeping it. Oh, that's the sea you were on about, Carl? Okay.
Yeah. Yeah, it is a carbon fiber display sheet with various things making it roll with then projected. You can see the projectors up there projecting the sea images on it. And it's multi-layered projection. Yeah, it is. So it crosses and just gives it that depth that makes it so real. My apologies, Carl, because I should have known that's what you were talking about, but I'm too distracted. But yeah, this is, yeah, this is, and I myself had only seen a little bit about it. So just seeing it now here live, it's like, wow, this is absolutely amazing. So the tip of Patagonia into Antarctica one of the weather stations and one of the running jokes that I did not get a chance to share with you but they're appropriate here but miniature wonderland loves its penguins there are penguins in every section on every platform throughout wonderland it is a running joke I don't know if it started with Freddy or Garrett but it's a joke there are penguins everywhere you go to Italy and the Amalfi Coast, you'll find some penguins sunbathing. You'll find some penguins eating spaghetti in the Rome. Uh, that there are just penguins everywhere. But this is just mind blowing. This is next gen. So let me let you get up close and see how that works. Yeah, they got the video that tells you how they did it, but I don't think, I don't remember them showing the entire thing in action because I, I just remember Garrett saying he wanted to keep the full show until they revealed it. But maybe they uh, posted an updated video where they, um, once it had been revealed to the public, but it's amazing. And then you have the little Antarctica section here. So the seas between, what is it, Tierra de Fuego? Um, yes, there's ice breaking off the glacier. Yeah. I'm going to come back and let you see some of this. But there are more exhibits and there's a 3D reality bit that you pay extra for. I think it's an additional 20 euros extra or 25 euros extra. And you can go into the 3D world where you can actually be miniaturized and put on the layout and walk around the layout through this 3D experience. We did not pay to do that one. Have you seen the scene with the orcas uh, trying to catch the seal on the ice? A seal playing with its beach ball? Yeah, yeah. So all the orcas are here just any time now, dude. Any time. And now you can see here, if you look upon the penguins on the ice. Oh, oh wait, we're at? The penguins, at okay. The ice. I gotcha. Waddle, 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 waddle. They start moving around. Pink with 
but yeah. what really is impressing is the water they have created. In. Yeah. Oh, that's something else. Yeah. All the rest is just technique. Research lab chasing this. Uh... Yeah, do do you want the water to be on three keys on the roads? What on that one? Oh, on this one. Go ahead. See the way. Okay. Oh yeah, some penguins jump off. I was waiting for the dolphins to jump up over there or whatever. survival exhibit expeditions Shackleton is crew just like well Alan I'm sorry to hear uh, things are getting to you I think we have seen every section, have we not? Yeah. That we have paid to see. Yeah. All right, well then, folks, I've been on for two hours and 20 minutes, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this, but let me switch the camera around. There, we got almost all this in there. There you go, Joyce. And, uh, Move closer to John. Should we say the famous words? We'll try. But uh, yeah, so that is a quick tour. Trust me, I did this quickly. There's a million things I could have shown you, pointed out, but it's, we, we really did rush through it. Um, but I was hoping you guys would enjoy seeing this maybe better than in a regular video. Um, next best thing to be in here. And uh, it's, and again, this is the first time I've seen the South South America, Patagonia, uh, and Antarctic displays, and they just never, you know, you can see the videos on how they do it, and then you get here, and it just blows their mind. So anyhow, um, this is the model train outside of America, Mount Center. We're going to end the stream here. So we're going to say the magic words. I'll feed the same. Happy trains. Take care, everybody. Thanks for being a part of this stream. Bye-bye.